It is 6 o'clock Pacific, 9 o'clock Eastern. Harrison with you, your new best friend. We are welcoming in some language unintelligible to most of you, but to those of us who speak American English, that sounded like perfect dialectic there. Welcoming you to our Harrison Hangout, where we come to you each weeknight. That would be Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday nights here on GoHarrison.com. want to let you know also we're going to be joining the Progressive Radio Network starting March the 8th from 5 to 6 p.m. That's Eastern Time, 2 to 3 Pacific. Well, as you may or may not know, Billy, who is our technical guy, whom you can see occasionally wearing the Superman shirt, he is, he's gay. Over here. Well, I just had to out him because it really gives me great and deep pleasure. The reason I bring that up is because, I don't know why I bring that up. I bring that up because I'm not the only one in the room. As a matter of fact, in the room right now is another guy. Is another guy who has taken great leaps forward as far as creating civilization as you and I might know it, might want it. And that would be to basically have children. Now, I've stated before that I'm not uh, particularly interested in spreading my seed in a way that would be... Um, manufacturing more humans. On the other hand, pre-existing humans might be rather interesting to take care of and bring into my family. So let's talk to somebody who's rather heroically done this. And if you read the Huffington Post, as we all do, you will have seen a story. And it's entitled, Mr. Gay World USA contestant and his partner share their unconditional love for their adopted toddler. And that's a fellow by the name of Burns Fernandez. He's with us right now. And Burns, welcome to the show. Well, thank you. Thank you for that big introduction. I don't know about heroic, but, you know, we try. <laughs> well, it's natural for you to do this, so it doesn't feel particularly heroic, but let's pretend that you were not in San Diego, that you were, let's say, where Billy is in Phoenix, and, and Billy can chime in here and there. He's really got his hands full right now, but in Phoenix, he couldn't necessarily just go adopt a child and then go to the grocery store and feel safe, and and so it is a heroic move. Anytime any one of us demonstrates the new normal, it becomes the new normal for the rest of us. Yeah, I, I like how you put it, though. It's, it's the new normal, because what really is normal? There, you know, it, it's, it, normal is, is very re relative. You know, it, what may be normal for me, I mean, everybody knows this, may not be normal for um, other people. But, um, and it's unfortunate, you know, um, knowing that fact that you just stated about Phoenix, because um, it shouldn't be that way. You know, it's, I believe that it should be um, everyone's right, just like um, uh, being able to go to a grocery store safely and, and, and uh, knowing that no one's going to attack you or being able to go to uh, school and um, not be called names and be bullied you know, for the rest of your high school or elementary school life, whatever it may be, um, it, being able to adopt a child or have a family should be everyone's right. There should be no question whatsoever. Well, there should be no question. But, you know, if any of us were suffering through um, CNN today, we would have seen John King gearing up for the great GOP convention to another one tonight, another debate debate. I love that. Let's all agree with just a fraction difference, and we'll call it a debate. But if you're watching it today, all we see are these endless, ridiculous monkey shines, these extraordinary statements using profound rhetorical devices. Newt Gingrich, one of my favorite. I could watch this guy all day and be wildly amused. Yes, I throw up. I admit it. Yes, it's repugnant, the content, but he manufactures it out of his ass. And then he manufactures the facts to support it. And this is why they're crafty. He can say, well, everybody has seen the university studies that show that uh, homosexuals can't actually raise children, that in fact the children turn into wildebeests after a course of three months. This is a well-known study that's in fact supported by the BBC, period. And then you have John King or any of them going, oh, yeah, that's the end of that, right? And so it's really hard when you're just doing something that's normal for it not to feel like a sudden aberration based on the popular dogma, dog shit, dog poop, dog pile, all the D words, all piled up high deep with steam coming off the top, if you like that analogy. 
Well, yeah, <laughs> it is a very good analogy. And, and again, that's an unfortunate thing because um, what people don't realize is, yes, you know, Newt Gingrich, he's one, probably one of the smartest politicians we have right now. But at the same time, you know, he's basing all of his information from studies that, guess what, are funded by people who want um, uh, the researchers to say what they pretty much whatever they want to say. And people just buy that. You know, they don't do their own research. They don't you do... It. You, you just said it, Burns. Burns Fernandez, PhD Esquire, Mr. Gay World USA. You just said it. People buy that. Uh -huh. That's exactly right. Let's say I hire you and I say, Burns, here's a $100 bill. And the ink is still wet, so don't smear it now. And I want you to do a study. And I want you to support the following argument. I give you the argument. Your job is to craft a brilliant scientific project, which you can prove, honestly, you can prove that a Mac keyboard, when put next to post-it notes, in the proximity of a zipped up penis in blue jeans, <laughs> creates a sunset that I'm looking at out there. Uh -huh. I, let me show it to you. <laughs> Look at that. Is that beautiful or that what? That is beautiful. Okay. That's California for you, right? Now, that's California for me, not for you. Or not for Billy, anyway. <laughs> but soon, trust me. He's working on it. Um, not yet. <laughs> not yet. Not quite yet. So, point is, we just created a syllogism. It's false, but it's a syllogism. If, P, then, Q, with a false argument, totally full of nonsense. But now that I've changed the subject sufficiently, let a little bit of breathing time go be be beyond the original argument. You qu can't quite remember the components that I brought up anymore. And all you remember was, yes, there was a sunset. Uh -huh. And he mentioned it would create a sunset. I saw the sunset, so it's true. Exactly. And that's the genius of these arguments. It, it's all these um, fallacies, all these, these um, um, hypotheses that they, they bring up to people, and, and people just believe in it. You know, they don't, like I said, they don't do their own research. They don't, I, I feel like society nowadays are like robots. Uh, someone will pr push push a button and they will move a certain way because that's they what... They will move a certain do. way. They exactly. will move a certain way. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like people just follow what someone else says because, oh, well, he's on TV. Oh, well, he's running but for president. He must know what he's talking about. But to what end? I mean, that's what I don't understand, because ultimately what happens is you have children who don't have parents. I mean, I don't understand. There's, there's, no, there's not even like a, a dollar gain here. That's, that's the part that's confusing. Yeah. There's, it, it, it's a win-win to me. I, I don't understand how they can turn a win-win into a lose. <laughs> well, well <laughs> honestly, there, 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 I think there is a way to get out of it, because with uh, social media alone, you know, I, I understand, you know, it, it's one of the most utilized um, so sources of media these days. And the thing is, people can just post whatever they want on there, you know. Um, and there's a lot of young kids who are always on Facebook or always on Twitter, on MySpace, if there ever, if there still is a MySpace, and gather all their information from there. And, <laughs> That's you know, funny. It, it's, it's, it's so, to me... And I, I, I'm, I might possibly be um, um, uh, fired for this, but I think things like that need to be controlled. You know, uh, yes, it is a parent's responsibility, but you, you, you have a great question. What if there's no parents involved? You know, I think it's society's responsibility to teach that the younger generation a positive, you know, information. That's just how I, I, I feel. And, and that's when that information is, one, available, two, has a platform upon which it can be distributed, and that seems to be the other issue. Let's talk for a second as we talk to Burns Fernandez. He is uh, Mr. Gay World USA, or certainly in the, in the process of becoming that. Um, tell us first what Mr. Gay USA is for Mildred in Ohio, saying, wow! <laughs> well... Mr. Gay World USA, if, if you, you're just going online and seeing on it on Facebook and whatnot, you might just think that, oh, it's just another male pageant. 
Um, and honestly, it's not, uh, especially this year. What the producers have done is they have searched extensively um, the whole United States for um, great candidates, contestants to join um, this organization, this foundation. Um, and uh, what it's about is uh, they wanted to showcase a whole broad perspective of what a gay man is. You know, there's a lot of stereotypes about being gay that all we do is party, go do drugs, and go do stupid and have sex and whatnot. But there's more to us than just that, you know. We have our own beliefs. Yes. We have our own um, passions. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about in West Hollywood. But that, thank I'm you. Just kidding. Oh, thank you. And, and I'm I'm in Marilyn Monroe's uh, former apartment, where I think there's mojo in here like nobody's business. I can see it manifest down on the street. But where you are in San Diego, I think it's a kinder, gentler country. Um, it, it just like anywhere else, just like in Hollywood and in Los Angeles, you know. It, it, Again, the point is, there's a whole broad pers of perspective as far as being gay is. You know, we have the crazy ones, and we have the normal, you know, modern gay that... Like um, me. Uh, uh, sure. <laughs> 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 hey, it's your show. I'll say whatever you want me to say. <laughs> um, but, um... So, what you're saying is that there's the entertainment ones, and then there's every. <laughs> Pretty much, sure. Yes. Yes. Sure. <laughs> to make it more simple. But um, Mr. Gay World USA this year, they've selected 12 um, amazing, diverse group of gay men who each have their own passions, their beliefs, and um, their platform that they truly believe in. And by selecting uh, these 12 men, uh, they've given us a, a, a venue, an avenue to voice out all of those um, platforms that we truly believe in. And if you go on the website, we've started adding our own individual platforms. Me, personally, um, I, uh, of, of course, uh, gay adoption and um, um, same-sex uh, families, couples, that's what, what I truly believe in. And I, with our society today, it's, it's one of the most um, current issues that you know everybody's been talking about especially gay marriage let me let me ask a, a devil's advocacy question not that i advocate for the devil although some would probably argue that i do but a lot of our straight friends who are shall we say limited in the imagination sector and or in the pure cultural sector and or more importantly in the educational sector they tend to ask the same questions like well which one is the woman which one of you is the is the mother well, neither is the mother. That's why we're two men. Exactly. Huh? The other one they want to know is, why not just go have a baby? Like, why not just go grab some chick off the street the way they would, mm -hmm. bang her on the sidewalk, and have a baby? I know. It, it, they make it sound so easy, right? It's just, it's, it's uh, amazing to me what people would um, suggest, you know, that we should do different or whatnot. But it, it's never that easy, especially with a society, you know. Um, specifically, our, our story, we, we thought about it. We thought about surrogacy. You know, we thought about um, going international overseas. We thought about um, adopting here. And we've, we've researched all those avenues. And for us, the perfect fit is adopting a child here in the U.S. Because, and... I, I'm not saying anything, you know, bad about all those people who go in, in, in another country, but there's so many kids here in the U.S. already that are um, ready and, 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 and available to be adopted. Why go somewhere else? You know, um, that's, that's our thing. And we went to a very great organization in um, Los Angeles, which is adopthelp.org, and we went to the seminar, an hour-long seminar. People came in there, and we met a couple who went through them um, with their process of adoption. And for us, it was a perfect fit. You know, it may be easy for us to just go grab another girl on the street and say, hey, you know, let me get my turkey baster and impregnate you with my semen and have a baby. You know, and in nine months, we have a baby. But it's not that easy. You know, it costs Turkey money, baster. Costs time. That's a lot of semen. Oh, <laughs> I mean, that's a lot. 
hey. That's a pint. <laughs> and I would think most women would scream. I don't know with joy or what, but but good for you. <laughs> but, but he, he, I forgot what I was going to say now. <laughs> but you, you know, you know, um, what, what I was trying to say, it's, it's not that easy, you know. Um, we have, you have to be smart about it. And the problem is, as far as being gay is concerned, is uh, there are a lot of people in our society who are anti-gay uh, adoption. They think that, and you mentioned uh, something earlier, too, that, oh, yeah, uh, two gay couples, where's the mother? Like, how, how is that child going to have, like, a, a maternal um, instinct on her growing up without a female um, role model? Or, or uh, wh where's the father? Like, how, that guy, gay, that's, uh, uh, boy, little boy, he'll grow up to be uh, very, very effeminate because it's raised by two women. You know, or that kid will turn up to be gay just like their parents. I'm like, it it doesn't work that way. It's not being gay is not contagious. <laughs> as much as we try, it's exactly. not. As much as we want everybody to be gay, <laughs> it doesn't work that way. You know, we don't have like a fairy dust that we just sprinkle on someone else. Like, Poop, you're gay. <laughs> wow, <laughs> you did just that lots well. And lots of alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I heard in, in L.A. it only takes a six-pack, but whatever. <laughs> of abs. Oh, okay, okay. I thought six-pack of beer, but... <laughs> We're talking right now with uh, Burns Fernandez, Mr. Gay World USA. You're looking at him right now. He, of course, is uh, featured in the Huffington Post because he and his partner are raising a little toddler, and uh, they've decided to express uh, their love by terms of a family, something that the humans have done, including the entire animal kingdom, by the way, since the uh, first cell started to divide. So this is not particularly unusual behavior, but it does stick out a bit because it's still not exactly the mainstream thing to do. And people have questions like, well, then if you want to have a family, why are you gay? And again, it just creates all these sort of ridiculous arguments. And it boils down to the fact that Gay is a biological phenomenon. If it's a choice, then yeah, it opens up a myriad questions, right? But the fact is, you didn't ask for it. You didn't know how to create it. It happened when you were way too young to be able to actually invent or create gay. But you always knew there was something magical and there was some enchantment in your soul. And I don't care how much your mother allegedly put that into there or your father beat it out of you it's stuck and i would ask any straight guy if it's a choice bring it on and somehow they can't choose they can't even choose to get an erection so either they have ed <laughs> or it's biological it, 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 it's baffling to me that even up to this day, with with all the research that's been done about it, they still keep pushing for oh, it's a choice, it's a choice. There's a remedy for it. I mean, there's a whole church that they built just to fix, you know, your gay disease. It it's not like that. Like with me personally, I God, even as far as I can remember, maybe five or six years old. You know, I I remember um, playing with my um, well, actually destroying. Careful. Careful. Destroying, right? Destroying my sister's Barbie dolls um, because it gave me a way to play with it because my, my dad and my, my mom and my sister wouldn't let me touch her doll. So, like, what I would do, I would sneak in there, pretend that I was destroying it because my mom would always tell me, oh, you need to fix it. You need to put it back together, which enabled me to play with the Barbie dolls because in my head I was like, why do I like dolls more? than my Transformer toys and whatnot. And then as I g get older, like I, more and more of these feelings started coming to me and I was like, I was born and raised in a very Catholic family. So it's very wrong to be gay, first and foremost. That's what it, Rick Santorum feels too. He's very <laughs> Catholic and he feels it's very wrong to be gay. He struggles with it horribly. I, Thank God you've, you've dealt with it. It's, it's, it's amazing. Like he's one of the uh, other you know, presidential candidates lately who has been amazing, who amazes me all the time with all his, like, statements about, like, being gay and whatnot. But like, how it, does he know? 
Seriously, was John Wayne re- an expert on gay men? I don't think so. <laughs> I really don't think so. And the ones who are experts, like, they, they put us to shame. They know the secret handshakes. They know uh-huh. the positions. They know the special foot taps in the men's room stall. It, I don't even know that. I don't even know any of that stuff. They How do you think I learned? <laughs> Boy, they know it. Like, something's going on there. It's like if you compile every speech that they've they've um, done and and make a book out of it, it's like a gay manual. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> make a gay manual out of it. It's amazing to me. Like, ah, like I learned so much by listening from them because, like, all these, just like what you said, all these little details. I was like, how do they even know that? You know, if someone came up to me and asked me about, I was like, so, like, you, you got? Did you put your your handkerchief on your left pocket or your right back pocket? I was like, what what is that? What does that mean? They were like, oh, that means your bottom or top. I was like, I don't even know what you're talking about. You know, like all these like signals that we're supposed to be putting out there. And I was like, uh, no, I have no clue what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's true. I mean, first of all, who wears handkerchiefs in 2012? Unless right. you're, you know, as old as Newt Gingrich, you know, <laughs> who has a hanky and a top hat. But that's all just another kind of drag now, isn't it? I'm going to pause for a second. We do have some phone lines here. We are coming to the end, but we'd love to hear your voice if you want to uh, chime in. You can see it, 310-737-TALK. You'll also see on the graphic that surrounds Burns, uh, his uh, 411 information, so that you can check him out in a much more deeping, deep and probing way, uh, as might make sense to you in your individual choices here. I want to quickly take a moment and talk about uh, our friends at DirecTV. Uh, as you know, we offer through public broadcasting through this show the ability for people, if you already have Direct TV or you want to get it, we can cut it by 60%. In other words, it's uh, happily and heavily underwritten by some of our wonderful sponsors who actually like you, the listener. They like you. They want you to have access to Nurse Jackie. They want you to drink some true blood. They want you to have a full and rich media life. We're talking HD. We throw in a free HD DVR. We'll hook up free four rooms, actually four different rooms for free. Send out the technician, give you the free satellite, all of that for about, it's under 50 bucks a month. Did I mention the Showtime, the HBOs, the Cinemaxes, and the rest of it? All of that is included. All you have to do is go to GoHarrison.com, GoHarrison.com, Tomorrow, tomorrow, you'll see an ad for Direct TV. Just to click on it, it'll have the phone number and all the information, and we'll be very happy to take care of you that way because it's our way of giving back. We're talking to Burns Fernandez, and did you like that beautiful segue back to you, uh, Burns? It was smooth, wasn't it? Flawless, smooth, flawless. like a urinary tract infection. <laughs> I love all your analogies. <laughs> I'm just trying to, trying to keep you regular, my friend. <laughs> and, and we're talking about the, the notion of, of gaiety, really, uh, a biological phenomenon that is a real yawner if you're a, uh, a dolphin or a seagull or a penguin. You just don't care at all. Exactly. But we, the human animals, because we're political animals, we like the... the cash and prizes, the money, power, and prestige connected to motivating huge groups of people against whatever the enemy we picked that day. When George Orwell wrote 1984 in Animal Farm, he knew something was going on. And so uh, the common enemy is either the terrorist, uh, the Negro, the person of color, which could also be the Negro, uh, the homose- the common homosexual, homosexual. Uh, it could be all kinds of things. Uh, we're right now the target because the GOP are uh, they've, they're in the foresk- the forefront of uh, election cycle. Did I well, I almost said foreskin? Didn't I? <laughs> I. <laughs> you were being so polite. You held back. Yeah, so there they are doing their usual song and dance. And it again reinvites the simple question of how is it that they are so expert at something that they say is so foreign to them? And let me ask you this just to prove the point here, Burns. What sport do you absolutely know nothing about and never watch? Sport. <laughs> 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 if you just answered it. <laughs> I mean, Let- I love figure skating, if that's a big, very cliche. I mean, I'll be honest, though. I love figure skating. Right. I don't know why. Why don't you tell us the rules of badminton? 
good. You just proved the point. So if you were going to start talking about the rules of badminton, you obviously had a real interest in it. Uh, yeah. Very. Likewise, Santorum talking about the shape of the glands when the sunlight hits the head of the penis at a certain angle and the dew drops glisten like a prism. You know, shit, he has studied that thing. <laughs> to the T. I mean, yeah. Like, if, if people don't understand what we're talking about here, you, they all need to do is go on YouTube and find um, all his speeches. It, it's baffling. It's, it's, it's amazing to me how he's even have supporters how people believe what he says when it doesn't make any sense no um intelligent human being would believe it i i i, I know i i probably hit a, 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 a lot of people here but like it just doesn't make any sense it's to me it's Stupid. <laughs> I can't think of a nicer word to say, but it's stupid. It's it doesn't make any sense why people would believe all these people what, what they're saying with with no with no research with no um, concrete uh, um, um, facts to support it. You know why would you buy it? So here's a, a hypothesis. It's an easy one. Let's say the same Rick Santorum declared he were an atheist and then said the exact same stuff about gay people. Would people still believe it? Um, I don't I think, think so. so. No, no. I don't think they'd believe no. it at all. I don't think yeah, he was I, steeped in some kind of magical science or some yeah. kind of bullshit, you know, uh, uh, Zogby poll data nonsense, but because he's super religious, as Newt is super religious, mm -hmm. and all these people are, they're just not credible. You know, Ron Paul, who, yeah, he mentions the G word and does a little bit of a Jesus tap dance, but not so much. He's more in the Ayn Rand camp. But so his stuff is met with a ton of skepticism. Mm -hmm. But if he's if he threw a crucifix on his back, he could say the same shit like, you know, when people get cancer, it's their own fault. Uh huh. They should, you know, they should uh, go cure it. But you're a doctor, Ron. You had a chance to actually save that guy that worked for you. You could have actually saved his life as a doctor. Why didn't you? Well, it was his fault. He got cancer. Mm -hmm. He should have. He should have handled it like a responsible citizen. You know, had he said that with the cross on his back, we would have gone, yeah, Jesus, yep. teach a man to fish. Mm -hmm. And then he can have, uh, you know, fish sticks, Mrs. Paul's or whatever. <laughs> it's, yeah, <laughs> people tend to lean towards religion as if it's the uh, end all and be all. Which, you know, there's no, there, I, I'm, I'm not saying it's a wrong thing, you know, but I think there is a... Um, there has to be a boundary to whatever you do, to everything that you do, everything you believe in. You know, at some point, um, your God, whoever you believe in, gave you a mind of your own to figure out what is wrong and what is right. A lot of the times, um, people forget that. You know, they, they forget to use their own brain and think, wait, there's something wrong with what he just said. I don't believe in that God or in his God because if his God... Because, like I said, me, I, I may, I, I was born and raised Catholic, you know. In in my household, yes, um, or in our religion, yes, homosexuality is a sin. But my parents never made me feel like I was a sinner, you know. After coming out to them, they loved me just the same. We still went to church. We still prayed to our God because for us, um, instead of um, believing that our God tells us to hate on other people, uh, our God uh, tells us to, it's okay, you know, I'm not going to give you anything that you cannot handle. And all these things uh, about being gay and about people attacking um, our community, I believe that's just my God's way of saying, you know what, this is a test. You can handle this. You know, there is... Uh, good out there, but you have to take the uh, bad in with a good. And I think 
um, as a community, we need to face all these problems head on. And look, just like what happened in Stonewall, you know, re-education right now is the key. We need to re-educate people about who we really are, what being gay is all about. You know, all these misconceptions, all these uh, crazy arguments, all these um, fallacies, all these false research about being gay and whatnot, we need to set that straight. Straight. <laughs> and, you know... As in straight to bed. Exactly. <laughs> we need to set that straight and let people know that, look, you have the wrong information. We're not bad people. We're here just like you. We want to have a family of our own. We want to live a normal life just like you do. And that's it, pretty much. You know, we people just forget. We, we, we've forgotten to treat, uh, sorry, uh, treat everyone with kindness. <laughs> we've forgotten to preach. That's the problem. <laughs> to um, to treat everyone with kindness. You know, it's a simple, simple human nature that we should all have. But lately, people have forgotten to express that. We just need to be kind to everybody. I think that's one of the gifts that gay people bring into the world. We tend to be uh, heavy on the school teacher side, uh, certainly in the arts, culture, um, architecture, things of this nature, sort of creating the basic cultural infrastructure that makes a society hum and buzz along. And you let these goober smoochers take over this portion of the 1%. And it's just going to mimic what their goal is, is complete domination. And that seems radical, but it is. It is radical. You know, I think we're much more disposed to sharing our toys. And I'll give an odd example here. But if you go to uh, uh, the average heterosexual cocktail party, it's going to be them and their friends. Are they ever, ever going to invite the cleaning lady? No, no. way. Mm -hmm. Do the gay people invite the cleaning lady? Hell yes. yes. Uh, everybody and the gardener, is well and the lawn man, exactly. and the semi homeless guy who's living on somebody's couch, and you know, a few millionaires. And we don't ever get together and like plan that, you know, is that okay? It's just, we just do that. Yeah. And I don't know that it's because we're oppressed and therefore we want, we don't want to be surrounded by oppressed people, but I don't think we have this notion of tininess and boundary the same way. Uh, well, I, I think it's just that in our minds we get it. You know, people are people. Whether you're rich, you're poor, you're homeless, they need the same respect as everyone else. And and I hate to say this, and, and, and because it may sound like us stereotyping, straight people don't tend to do that. They tend to be a little bit more closed-minded. Especially you put religion on top of that, it makes it even worse. It makes it a beautiful cocktail of fun and pleasure. <laughs> as long as you're holding that shaker, right? <laughs> hey, I want to I thank you so much for joining us today here on uh, Go Harrison and for joining us on the, on the Hangout as we continue to bring people into the 21st century. Although you're quite obviously uh, no technical Luddite here. So it's great to have you comfy cozy in our hangout. Thank We've had you. people on going, you know. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. There's room for everybody. So give us the quick upload, as it were. How do we follow you, Burns? Follow your uh, Mr. Gay World USA career and the family you're building and all the rest of it. Yes, um, well, you can follow me at Twitter, at Burns Fernandez, or uh, on my Facebook page, which is Mr. Burns Fernandez, or uh, email me at BurnsFernandez at uh, me.com for any questions as far as um, adoption. Um, if you have any other, anything, you know, shoot my way, and I'll, as it I'll were. be happy to, <laughs> to. <laughs> <laughs> reply to you. <laughs> you're always catching me off guard. I'm so trying to you're be all... You're the one saying it. <laughs> I'm sitting here clutching my chihuahua, hoping to God that something doesn't slip out like that. I, okay, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm Billy only... warned me. He said, look, I don't know about this guy, but I, I think he's going to do double entendres throughout the whole show. <laughs> you just got to pay attention. I said, okay. I, I don't have room here. <laughs> I wish, I wish, I wish... 
Billy thought of that and suggested that, and I would have done it. Ah, uh, you would have you would have given us a double, I think. <laughs> oh, you know, before before I go, I would like to um uh, do a shout out to the two organizations that I truly believe in, which I actually advocate for, which is um a note to my kid dot com and all family project. Um, a note to my kid is run by a really good friend of mine, Patrick Wallace, uh, from San Diego, which promotes a um um positive image of families and their unconditional love to. Um, their gay loved ones and all family project which um, is based off of San Francisco um, run by a, a nice gentleman named Charles um, it's um, an organization in which they uh, again show a positive view of same-sex couples and their families who are most likely um, unrecognized and uh, show a positive image of them via um, um, photography social media and public forums and whatnot so shout out to those peop um, people, those websites. Please go visit them and support them. And they do a lot of great things for the gay community. Well, thank you so much, as do you, sir. And I won't be small and petty and ask you to take off your shirt since you are running for Mr. Gay World USA because that would be petty and small. <laughs> Wouldn't it, Billy? Uh, petty and small what? Us? No, never, really. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thank you so much, Brian. Thank you. We'll really keep it PG you. this time. <laughs> we'll keep it PG, and we'll just have a PG-13 after we hang up. Yes. <laughs> hey, hey right, quick question. Is, is, is the Mr. Gay World, is it, a, is it like an online pageant? Is, it, is, it, is there a show oh, for this? Is there... Yeah, no. Uh, Mr. Gay World, actually, this year, um, I didn't really talk about that much, but they've um, transformed it into a reality TV show in which we were subjected to um, um, different challenges um, such as social, uh, politi po political, um, and physical uh, um, challenges and whatnot and each week um, guys get eliminated you know and fortunately there's only one winner but um, just like what I said earlier uh, this foundation, the executive producers, uh, uh, Michael Billy and Jarl Hagedal were able to um, select 12 amazing men who any of us could actually go home with a crown and represent the U.S. in the international um, contest, which is going to be held in uh, Johannesburg, South Africa. Wow, um, Joburg, you're going to have a fun time there. Um, well, if I win. You'll win. Poof, <laughs> done. Magic fairy dust, the stuff you mentioned <laughs> earlier. <laughs> Where 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 is the show going to air at? Then? Yeah. Um. Right now, it's under a post production. Um. There's a couple of um few networks that they are um in talks of um showing, um the show. Um. Right now, I I can't just I, I don't know anything yet as far as that is concerned. But as soon as I find out, I will let um everyone know. Um, via Facebook or Twitter, um, and I, I'm pretty sure you you guys will hear about it pretty soon. Um, a target date I think is end of March or beginning of April. Um, we will know for sure. Great. Well, thank you so much, Burns Fernandez. Uh, and when I'm down in San Diego once a year, I'll give you a call. We'll have a coffee. Hey, you're only two hours away. Oh, really? I want, uh, what other state do you take? Oh, well, yeah, that's right. I'm like, it takes two hours just to get out of West Hollywood. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> just to get to pavilions. That's why I live here. There's no traffic here. <laughs> See, you can do your show here. It's nice and beautiful. Yeah, and you probably have that internet stuff there, too. What is that? Exactly. <laughs> it's a series of tubes. <laughs> that's how we roll the stuff back and forth here. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Pneumatic tubes. <laughs> But this is really, I, I am so happy that you guys um, invited me to be in a part of your show. Um, so happy that you gave me a platform and talk about me, myself, and my family, and my um, um, participation in uh, Mr. Gay World USA and organizations that I advocate for. Um, anytime you guys, you know, need someone to hang out with, give me a call. I'm always here. We'll reach out and give. We'll give you a nice yank and pull you back into our uh, our world here. Hey, I'm always here. I'm ready to be yanked. All right, very good. Famous last words. I would have said them, but he beat me to it. <laughs> Harrison, with you. Thank you so much. Reminding you, we are on. We do these hangouts 
on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Mondays, KPFK 90.7 in L.A. We have 93.7 FM in San Diego, where our friend Burns is. 99.5 in Central California, Sierra Madres. And 98.7 up in Santa Barbara. And, of course, we're starting March the 8th on Progressive Radio Network. That would be Tuesdays uh, at 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific. For now, ta-ta, we will... What's that? Thursdays, right? Yeah, I said... Oh, did I say Tuesday? You said Tuesdays. I meant the other Tuesday, Thursday. (laughs) (laughs) So for now, uh, TTFN, which is what they say in Johannesburg, ta-ta for now. (laughs) <laughs> and uh, we will catch you later. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Thank you. Oh, he's gone.